-hmm. one of the really interesting things as well that, that you mentioned when just before we started the conversation is I asked you, you know, okay, so Adam, you head up the, the data science team at mm -hmm. Foursquare and you basically said, look, um, I don't know that I would call it just a data science team. We kind of integrate our data scientists and our software engineers. Could you speak a little bit to that? Like, what is the, um, what's the nature of that integration between the two, uh, those two camps? Yeah, I mean, so we don't have a data science department. We have an engineering department, um, which cuts across a lot of different functions. And, and I tend to think of data science and machine learning as being one of those engineering functions that is growing a lot these days. It's not so different from how Android is growing as a specialty mm -hmm. and cloud management is growing as a specialty and, you know, JavaScript expertise is growing as a specialty. So, um, you know, my area within engineering largely covers our developer facing products. And so that includes the apps, it includes Pilgrim, uh, it includes uh, our API development, it includes a lot of infrastructure and platform work, um, and it also includes machine learning data science uh, as one of those areas. Uh, and generally at Foursquare, the way we operate is that data scientists do need to understand software. Uh, most of our data scientists write production code. Um, often our data science is done in the same languages as our production development is done so that you don't have to do translation of models from one language to another or anything like that. Um, I tend to think that, especially at a small company, having that, that type collaboration works a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, getting back to that topic of like, what is data science? A lot of it depends on that. You know, some companies, yeah. when they say we have a data science team, what they mean is we have an analytic support function. Yes. Right. Like we have a team of data scientists over here and they look at data and make charts and make dashboards that help us understand things. Right. Which is an important function at many companies, but it's it's more of a support function and more of a sort of tool for understanding things. It's like a business process. For, right. Right. It, it's a tool for understanding as opposed to a tool for development. At a place like Foursquare, where machine learning models are a big chunk of our product, mm -hmm. data science is a, is a development function. Yeah. Right. So the, the snap to place model that lives within Pilgrim is part of the product development of Pilgrim. The entity resolution model that lives within our point of interest database is part of the product development of our, of our places API. And so we think of data science as being part of the product development team, as opposed to being support function. So I really find that interesting. It plays right into one of my biases, which is I do think I see the field evolving, sort of bifurcating along the lines of you have the sort of uh, the core product function, and then you have that business oriented, oriented as you said, analytics function. Um, the I mean, it used to be, of course, like back in 2013, 2014, data science was just like enough of a term, a catch all on its own that you could have just like a bunch of Jupyter notebooks with pandas and scikit-learn running, and you were a data scientist, and you didn't have to get your hands dirty with deployment and that sort of thing. Um, was there a point where where Foursquare was operating under that model, or was this always integrated? It was less integrated in the past. Um, I mean, data science has served different functions at Foursquare. For example, there was a time at Foursquare when there was a separate analytics team hmm. that did purely analytics that was not related to product development, that was not putting things out in the world. It was more for internal understanding, right? Which, right. which is, you know, what some people might call business intelligence or business insights. Um, so that was a function uh, which was later integrated. Um, we had a small, more isolated data science team in the past that did more modeling in a vacuum, mm -hmm. as I think of it. Um, and a lot of companies still operate that way where you'll have your data scientists will build models and then they'll say, here's the model. It does a thing. Please, engineers, go make this reality. Yeah. Now. Like find the, find the way to get this in users' hands, um, which sometimes involves, you know, rebuilding the model in a different language or building lots of plumbing or, or things like that. Um, I have personally found that it's easier when I can have smaller cross-functional teams that can do everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the skill sets of, of, a, of a data scientist are very similar to the skill sets of, you know, like a backend engineer yeah. for the most part, um, especially, you know, as a lot of this stuff is becoming library driven and this stuff is becoming a little bit more standardized and the tooling is getting more mature, you know, uh, a data scientist who knows how to, you know, uh, 
write effective PySpark jobs and process big data and build models, that person is not very far from a software engineer really yeah. in any environment. And so I, I do think those areas are getting closer. I think business intelligence will remain its own thing because sometimes you just need business intelligence and that's yeah. fine. Um, but I think for companies that are using data as their part of their core product development, I think you'll see the continuation of people hybridizing between modelers and, and people who build systems. 